Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to It's Rainmaking Time. This is Kim Greenhouse, and today is about silver. Everything you want to know about silver with David Morgan. If you haven't heard of David Morgan, he is the author of Get the Skinny on Silver. He is the founder of Silver Investor, home of the Morgan Report. He is at silverinvestor.com. He's one of the, I would say, several handfuls of people around the world who really get it about silver, its importance, its utility. Silver is an investment. Literally everything you want to know about silver, David Morgan can tell you about it. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to It's Rainmaking Time, David Morgan. Good day. Good day. Well, that's quite an introduction. I hope I can live up. <laughs> you know, that was done for me many years ago in a tennis match. I used to be a tournament tennis player, and I was very, very young. I had this huge introduction. It was a final match, and I opened the whole match, and I served the ball, and I hit the side of the racket. The thing went hundreds of feet outside of the court. It was humiliating. I know that you won't do what I did. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's hope not. Don't <laughs> you? Yeah. I'll put my racket down. We'll yeah, put the that. racket down immediately. Well, I read Get the Skinny on Silver, and the first thing I wanted to talk about for the common person who's looking for an investment and looking to do something with paper money to retain their purchasing power and to actually get into metals, I'd like to talk about silver fundamentals and really distinguish it for us because on one hand, people think of it as a commodity. On another hand, we're told it's a form of money. What is it? Well, I get that question a lot, and that's uh, a very good question. There are several ways to answer it. Really, silver at this point in history is both money and a commodity. I mean, if you look at the best studies in the world on silver, what you'll find is about 50% or a little more than that of the silver market is industrial demand in one way, shape, or form. And there's thousands of reasons for it to be used in industry. It reflects light better than any element. It conducts electricity better than any other element. <clears throat> it's used in all kinds of applications. A lot of them are chemical processes beyond photography, uh, Using making polyester as an example. Also, uh, in a lot of chemical processes around the petroleum industry, and on and on. So it's both. It's really uh, a monetary metal like gold, but it's also an industrial metal like copper. The thing that's interesting about silver's history to me is the aspect that um, if you go back into history and you study silver, what you find is the word for money and the, in the Torah, which is obviously the Jewish faith, the word for money and the, is silver. It's not gold. So from a, a Jewish perspective, the Torah declares that money is silver. If you go into the Latin languages, the Latin root, the word for money and the word silver are synonymous. It's not gold, it's silver. If you go into the Asian languages, the character for money is a little building which represents a bank with bars of silver in it. So in the Asian languages, you have silver as money. So is silver money? Is it not? I don't really like the argument to me. It's not just money. Obviously, it's an industrial metal as well, but certainly it has its place as money. It always has. In fact, we had money in circulation as silver up until 1964 officially, and of course, coins that were 90% silver in the U.S., uh, continued beyond 1965 for a while until the po some of the population, I say some because most people were asleep at the switch, were taking these coins out of circulation, betting on the fact that like all fiat currencies, that silver would be worth more in paper terms than the face value. And of course, that is the case and has been for quite some time. So is silver money? You bet it is. Is it industrial metal? You bet it is. Is it both? Absolutely. Um, but I will not go down stating that it's not money. I mean, it's just got too many applications to be used as money, a store of value. It has all the classical uh, attributes that Aristotle gave to money, and I can't name them off the top of my head, but it's fungible. Every piece of silver that's 999 fine is like every other. It's divisible. It's recognizable. It's uh, worth a lot in a small space, um, you know, and on and on. So it's got every attribute that gold has. As far as classical money from the 
uh, Aristotelian perspective, and yet most people don't have any of that information. They are, you know, oblivious to the blind truth that all fiat currencies eventually fail. And that's one of my biggest statements, and I continue to pound the table because most people don't understand that there's one guarantee in the financial realm, and that is 100% of the time, every time a government has declared by edict, edict means mandate, they say that this is money and it's a bunch of paper backed by nothing. It has failed 100% of the time. So that's my biggest uh, statement that I can make on the show. I probably can't make one after this time that's more important than that. There's got to be a reason why Warren Buffett in 1997 bought 129.7 million ounces of silver. Now, it's known that he has sold either, I don't know if it's all of it or some of it, but if Warren Buffett has gotten into it, it seems right now we're in an environment where finally people are getting the message that there's either some type of a super currency in the wing, that countries are calling for a super currency, the G8 and the G20 are demanding that there's a one world bank set up in a new banking situation. There's a call for the special drawing rights to be used as money. And so it just seems like metals in context are not really considered except for gold, but that silver has been kind of dismissed. It's kind of been left aside. Why? Well, I think it's it doesn't get near to the publicity that gold gets. I mean, most people don't even think of silver as an investment. Now, that's not true as we're doing this this program because the silver ETF started a few years ago, and anyone that's in the financial markets and looks at them, you know, at a fairly deep level, uh, knows that you can invest in silver through uh, an exchange traded fund. In fact, there's a lot more than just the SLV, although that's the primary one. I think Buffett was the first one to bring people's attention to the fact that silver could be, you know, is a, a worthwhile investment, we could say that. But electronically traded funds are a contractual paper instrument. They're not the actual real metals themselves. So explain that to the public. Okay, well, I think you did a pretty good job. Basically, all the ETFs, I should say that. Let me say it this way. The ETF SLV and some others are settled in cash only. So they supposedly or purportedly have silver backing that paper. But if you read their uh, the prospectus carefully, what you'll find is that not it's not a hundred percent backed. Uh, there's some debate going on whether or not you know it's totally backed by silver. It isn't. I really don't want to get into that debate too, debate too much because the the plain fact at the surface is very very apparent. It's a paper contract settled in paper. <clears throat> There's no one that's allowed to take any silver by purchasing an ETF, uh, the SLV ETF. So I look at it as a proxy for silver if you want to bet on the price. It also could be used as a hedging vehicle. Um, but it's a convenient. It's a convenience for a lot of people. In fact, in the tax situation surrounding the SLV is something you should look into as well because regardless of the time held, it's usually taxed as a commodity, which is at a higher rate than if you're uh, holding, let's say, a stock investment. So there's a lot of reasons to be a little bit wary of the silver ETF, the SLV, if you are not a professional investor. But the professionals are in there, and they like to trade markets, and it's a way to buy silver very easily. And, of course, you do get your, you know, your paper out, in and out, in and out. So I'm not totally against it. I think on balance it's probably beneficial because it has you know, awakened a lot of people to the fact that silver is a viable investment. It's just far from my favorite form to use as an investment, especially a primary investment. I've always taught and still do that the best way to invest in the metals is to buy the metals themselves. That's the way you should start your metals portfolio. Which, Nothing beats the real thing. Which brings me to the next question. Do you have any type of report or any type of article that can advise the public where we can buy metal? Now, I interviewed James Turk, who's wonderful, who, as you know, 